neighbors. I was sent to the well behind our house to pump water. The farmhouse where I live with my grandparents did not have indoor plumbing. From the window, my grandmother caught a glimpse of me twirling my fingers in the water and became enraged. Though I was only daydreaming innocently, as any child might, she was angry because this was our drinking water and I had put my fingers in it. She then asked me if I'd been playing in the water, and I said, No. She bent me over and whipped me so violently, my flesh welted. Afterward, I managed to put on my white Sunday best dress. Blood began to seep through and stain the crisp fabric, a deep crimson. Livid at the sight, she chastised me for getting blood on my dress, then sent me to Sunday school. In the rural South, this is how black children were raised. There wasn't anyone I knew who wasn't whipped. I was beaten for the slightest reasons. Spilled water, a broken glass, the inability to keep quiet or still. I heard a black comedian once say, the longest walk is to get your own switch. Well, I not only had to walk to get the switch, but if there wasn't one available, I had to go find one. A thin, young branch worked best, but if it was too thin, I'd have to braid two or three together to make it stronger. My grandmother often forced me to help her braid the switch. Sometimes the whippings would get saved up for Saturday night when I was naked and freshly bathed. Afterwards, when I could barely stand, she would tell me to wipe that pout off your face and to start smiling. Bury it as though it never happened. Eventually, I developed a keen sense of when trouble was brewing. I recognized the shift in my grandmother's voice or the look that meant I had displeased her. She was not a mean person. I believe she cared for me and wanted me to be a good girl. And I understood that hushing my mouth or silence was the only way to ensure a quick end to punishment and pain. For the next 40 years, that pattern of conditioned compliance, the result of deeply rooted trauma, would define every relationship, interaction, and decision in my life. The long-term impact of being whipped, then forced to hush and even smile about it, turned me into a world-class people-pleaser for most of my life. It would not have taken me half a lifetime to learn to set boundaries and say no with confidence had I been nurtured differently. As an adult, I'm grateful to enjoy long-term, consistent, loving relationships with many people. Yet, the early beatings, emotional fractures, and splintered connections that I experienced with the central figures in my young life, no doubt, helped develop my solitary independence. In the powerful words of the poem Invictus, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Millions of people were treated just as I was as children and grew up believing their lives were of no value. My conversations with Dr. Bruce Perry and the thousands of people who were brave enough to share their stories with me on The Oprah Winfrey Show have taught me that the effects of my treatment by those who were supposed to care for me weren't strictly emotional. There was also a biological response. Through my work with Dr. Perry, my eyes have been open to the fact that although I experienced abuse and trauma as a child, my brain found ways to adapt. This is where hope lives for all of us, in the unique adaptability of our miraculous brains. As Dr. Perry explains in this audiobook, understanding how the brain reacts to stress or early trauma helps clarify how what has happened to us in the past shapes who we are. How we...